everyone, this is Lolly again. I had a request to show how I made this flower here, paper flower. I was actually given the instructions by my friend Jackie, and apparently there are several YouTube videos online for this already, but I will show you how I do it. I had to six circle punches in cardstock. These all match, they don't have to, and you can use pattern paper. This has pattern paper. If you can see, it's double-sided. It has a uh, flowers on one side and stripes on the other. Then something to pierce the paper with. I have a paper piercer. I just kind of estimate where the center of this is. Watch, get your fingers out of the back and poke a hole. You could use a nice fat safety pin for that. Then I use a Q-tip and I'm going to roll the paper downward around the Q-tip. Oops, I did two at once. And then also sideways. So you roll it one way and then an other. And this just breaks up the fibers in the paper a little bit and makes it easier to make the flower. So I did one way and then the other. And I'm always going, see it's already kind of curved that way from me poking the hole. So I'm going to curl it in the same direction, curling up. There we go, that's three. And this is a really easy project. Um, I do it while I'm watching television, that's four. Now my hole punch is one and a quarter inch diameter. You can make flowers of any dimensions based on the size of your punch. You could use a scalloped punch. That would be really cute. And if you have a bigger flower, a hole punch, I mean circle punch, you might want to consider adding an extra um, petal in there, like make seven instead of six. Otherwise, it might be a little floppy. I did try to use just regular... Um, pattern paper and not cardstock and it may it wasn't stiff enough for me then you need a small brad and this is small I'm going to poke it through all the holes from the top meaning all my petals lined up so that they are curved up toward the ceiling and just stick them on there and it really doesn't matter if your hole punch was right in the middle because it just adds to the uniqueness of the flower and makes it look more genuine then spread the little wings on your brad and across the back Okay, and then one layer at a time, you want to grab that and bring it up toward the top and just scrunch it, just like that. Okay, there you go. And then you do the next layer. You just keep doing it until all the layers are done. Yeah, if I can get a hold of it. Sometimes it makes you feel like your fingers are really fat. <laughs> um, it looks more genuine of a flower if you do one at a time instead of grabbing them, all six of them and swishing them up. Because if you do them one at a time, then they're, they're not in the same fold pattern and it looks more like it would occur in nature. Okay, another one. And just keep mushing them up and squeezing them very hard. Another one, whoops. And um, I'll show you my collection when I'm done squishing this one and that one. So when I get the last one, I just kind of all mush it together and that's what you get, okay? Then you just gently pull them apart a little bit, not a lot, to get that flower effect. So I'll show you the ones I have so far. And again, this is just what I've done from watching television. Here's one I tried with um, different color papers in it, altering every other one, and it's a really big punch. This one was just patterned paper. It wasn't cardstock, and it's a little too floppy. It won't retain its shape. But you notice it also has a little scalloped edge, which I really like that. And this one here, I did spritz it with a little bit of um, ink spray to see what that would look like. So that's my little collection there. They're really easy to make and great embellishments to glue onto your project. I hope that helps you. Like I said, I was requested to show this, so I hope that is a help to you. Thank you so much for watching.